Ahoy, salty dogs! My name is Lenscap, and today we are playing Star Maid. This is episode number five. Um, today, we are going to work on a new uh, mining ship. In the previous episode, we took the old ship, uh, which was awesome and designed like a shark. Um, we took it out for a mining excursion. And were promptly destroyed. Um, I kind of uh, went back and looked, and uh, I took that little shuttle I had, which was basically just um, the core and a power uh, recharger, whatever they're called, uh, reactor, power reactor, and uh, and a thruster, and went back to the scene of the crime, uh, mostly for the screenshot for last episode. But uh, I found a pirate ship, and it was shooting missiles at me. So that's what killed us. Um, today, we're going to work on a mining ship. Now, I have been doing some testing, and I have uh, some news to share with you guys. So this is going to work, this episode is kind of going to work as a, um, uh, as a little bit of a technical, um, a little more technical than we, than we usually are on this. Um, but this is a pretty technical game, so um, we've, uh, we've done some numbers, let's do some min-maxing real quick. Um, you know, I really should make a skin for my guy. I think you can skin these guys. Okay, so, uh, what have we found out? So, I was playing around first with power reactors. Um, so when you build a ship, the first thing you want to put on it are power reactors. And, uh, and I found, um, some interesting, uh, things. So, I've got 50 reactors on me. Um, and I found, I tried four different, um, like, methods of uh, placing the reactors. And I found that I got four different numbers um, for power recharge. Um, which I thought was very interesting. So, uh, so, that's, uh, so that's cool. So, uh, the first thing I found, and the least efficient, um, was I just made a block of them. So let's do that really quick. If we hold Alt, uh, I'm sorry, if we hold Control, then we get, this is building mode. Um, this took me forever to figure out, and I'm kind of embarrassed about it. But uh, if I had trouble, I figure somebody else will learn from this too. You can slide these guys and adjust how big the block you're building is. See, now I've got a 4x4x4 four by four by four block, so we're going to make that out of reactors. Um, and uh, it makes 4x4... Four it makes 3 by 4 plus 2. Um, and this gives us 2472 power uh, per second, energy per second. Um, which, is, uh, which is okay, but uh, this is the least efficient way to lay out your reactors. Um, the next method I found uh, was, a, was 5 by 10 by 1. Um, so here, let's do this. We can go remove mode, and then, whoops, and right click, and that'll remove them all. And I got them all back. So now, if we do uh, 5 by 10 by 1, then we can place these, and that puts all 50 of our reactors down. Uh, that gives us 3244. So, uh recharge per second energy per second so that's the next most still pretty efficient inefficient um, compared to some of these other numbers so the next one and uh, I'm not gonna do this just for sake of brevity because um, it takes forever to lay it out but uh, what I did was I made a cube um, of these reactors but I made sure none of them were touching um, so what I did was I placed them like this uh, basically with none of them touching in, uh, in a cube. Um, just to see kind of how uh, the reactors responded when spaced out. Um, and that gave me a total of 7,842 uh, energy per second. So that's a lot better. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Um, that gives us... Um, about twice as much as the previous one. So that's uh, that's interesting. That's good to know. So it's more efficient to have the reactors not touching um, than touching at all. 
so the third, uh, or the fourth rather, um, way that I laid these reactors out, um, and this was the most efficient that I found, was I made, uh, and a lot of people have on YouTube know this already, but you make a chain of eight, and then you want to cover three axes with them. Like this, so one, two, three, four, five five, six, seven, and then you go uh, a third axis, we'll go vertical, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so you do that, and if you lay them all out like this, um, seven by seven with, with another one, so they all end up being eight by eight long, like, arms. Um, if you lay them all like this out, then you get six blocks left over, um, but once you place all those six blocks as well, and you just kind of, I set them so they weren't touching for this result, and I got 9,890 power per second, uh, which is pretty phenomenal. So I wanted, uh, there was one more method that I wanted to try, and uh, I haven't tested this one yet. Um, and that's kind of a kind of a hybrid of all of the other ones um, But I wanted to test how much power you would get if you did uh, Like smaller um, Smaller increments um, of the th of the ones so like um, So for example We have a um, so for example, let's do like like the three axis uh, option. So if we do like this, and then for some reason my mouse isn't responding the way I thought it would, uh, and I don't know how to get it back. Uh, okay. Anyway, we do we do one there, one there, one there, and one there like that. Um, that gives us. 476 regen per second. Um, what if we did this on just a smaller scale really quick, just to test? So that gives us four, that's 47, 476, that's the same. That's 376, so that one's less. And then if we do them where none of the four are touching, that gives us 563. So that's the most on a small scale. Interesting. Okay. What about on a larger scale? So I built this kind of reactor here, uh, kind of as a test here. And uh, basically it's got in the corners, um, it's got that first shape we tried with the, uh, with the four blocks in it during, facing the three axes. Um, so it's got four of those in each corner and then uh, all the, uh, none of the other blocks touch. Um, they're just arranged in a cube, which is kind of cool. It uses exactly 50 blocks. Uh, it looks really cool. Um, but it gives us 6346. So it's right about in the middle um, as far as like efficiency goes for the power. So definitely the most efficient seems to be spaced out. Um, but... Uh, yeah, seems to be spaced out and not touching. Um, the uh, as far as like the size of the reactor versus um, how much power output. Now, if you have a lot of room, you can do the three axis kind of options. If you can make the axis big, um, I, uh, I haven't tested this, but I did read that as long as the arms are eight blocks or longer. Um, then that is always going to be more efficient. And my testing did show us um, a significant gain in, uh, in a reactor of that size. So, why am I doing it this way? Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of what we found with power. Um, now, obviously, uh, that's all well and good, but we need our ship to look cool. That's number one. Um, so we can kind of use a mix of both. I don't have to be. I don't have to have the most efficient spaceship in the fleet. I just have to have the coolest looking one. So, <laughs> um, but we did want to do those tests, you know, to make sure that we weren't 
uh, putting our power reactors in uh, in a really poor kind of um, configuration there. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit more testing uh, before we actually get to building here, um, but I wanted to start with the shield blocks. Um, so if we arrange them all like this, none of these shield blocks are touching. Um, we end up with 214 uh, shields per second uh, that we recharge. Um, now currently it looks like we have 220 shields and I guess that's just from the core, uh, but I don't have any actual like uh, shield capacitors out. Um, so let's remove all these and uh, I did one other test um, that I'll just share with you guys so you kind of understand the methodology um, of my thinking and of my testing. And that was, I did one giant mass of shield um, rechargers. And I only have 39 of these. I ran out of money before I could buy 50. But And, okay, so that's the same amount. That's all 39 of them. Uh, we end up with the same figure, 214 per second. Um, so, uh, as, so basically that means it doesn't matter... Um, how many shields we have, um, those or how, how they are laid out. They can be anywhere. Um, and I believe it's the same with the capacitors. Um, if we place uh, like a big mass of them, um, then we get uh, 5,289 uh, shields. So an easy way to test this is... Um, Let's remove all these puppies. And I got 50 back. So an easy way to test this is to make two smaller masses. Or we can just make several smaller masses of them um, that aren't linked together, basically, and just see. Yeah, so now we've got 5,289. So it's the same amount. So these, it doesn't matter how these are configured either. Um, so they uh, can go basically anywhere. So we can think that, keep that in mind uh, while we're building the guts of our ship. Okay, so for the salvage modules, they uh, work based on how many blocks are touching. It doesn't matter how long um, your like array is. This is two guns, um, and each gun has six blocks in it. Um, so uh, to put this, uh, to illustrate this another way, um, if we add three like that, that's the same power gun. Um, it doesn't matter as long as it has six blocks and they're touching like that. Um, now if we add another array like this, now we have four guns, uh, because of the symmetry. Um, because they're not touching. Corners touching doesn't count. So here we have four guns. Um, of six blocks each. So uh, my research um, on this, which includes reading the Wikipedia article, and that's about it <laughs> for salvage cannons, um, states that the number of cannons that you have in a line uh, or grouped together is what affects your salvaging speed. Um, and we'll talk about the duration um, of your beams in a moment, but to affect your salvaging speed, it matters how many cannons you have in a row. Um, so let me just grab my notes. Um, if you have one cannon, then it takes seven seconds to mine a block. So that's, so that's one cannon. Um, so we'll be able to mine two blocks with this each seven seconds. Uh, that's pretty slow. Um, now, it increases exponentially to a point, and then there are some diminishing re returns, kind of. So, two blocks together gives you about a three-second mining time. So, this way, we get two blocks every three seconds. If you do five blocks, then that gives you, it's about one second per block. Um, so, that's much faster with a few blocks, with only a few blocks. Now, if we do, uh, if we do ten blocks, now we're talking. This is about half a second per block, um, so that's much faster. Um, but as you notice, you know, one second for five, half a second for ten. Okay, if we make it twenty blocks, then we're about point one seconds. 
per beam, per block. Um, so that's really fast. So every second, one Mississippi, <laughs> we get uh, 10 blocks out of that. So that's pretty good. Okay, now if we do 50 blocks, um, I left that, that last one was off a little bit, but that's 50 blocks. Um, that gives us 0 0.07 uh, seconds to mine a block. Now we're cooking with grease. That's super quick. I'm just fixing that. Okay, it's 0.7 seconds. That's 0 0.07 seconds. That's 7% 7 of a second. So every second, we can mine 700 blocks. Wow. What if we have 100 blocks? Well, this is where our diminishing returns kind of come in. Um, that makes this guy uh, twice as large as it currently is. So that's about uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, that's 50, and that's another 50. So that's 100 blocks. This cannon uh, can mine one block in 0 0.02 seconds. Okay, so here is a working cannon. By the way, if you didn't know this, if you want to tell your cannons which like uh, which block to shoot the beam out of, you can go to the end of a segment or wherever in the segment and hit R on it, and that says make output. So if we want the top ones all to be where our beams come from, we just hit R on each of those, and then we go in and fire our cannons. Um, they all shoot out of that top block, so that's kind of cool. So, uh, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was we've got a little basic kind of cannon set up here. But if we go in and we just hold right click like we're going to fire our cannons, um, you can watch the computer in the number one slot there. Um, you can definitely see that the cannons run out of juice um, before the um, timer is down on the computer. Now we don't want that. We want our cannons to be able to fire continuously. So how do you make that happen? Um, so what you can do there um, is if you take a, um, a, a, a cannon computer, um, now you also need cannon blocks, um, and if you put as many cannon blocks as you have uh, salvaging blocks, then you can slave the um, the cannon computer off the salvaging computer. So if we hit C to grab the salvaging computer and then V to slave the, the cannon computer off of it, then it kind of uses uh, the efficiency of the cannons for the um, timer of the salvager. So now if we go back in here, let's hit T, you can see that the salvaging computer, of course, is our primary slot. And in the secondary slot, we have the cannon computer. Now it's at 100% uh, efficiency there, efficacy. Um, if we were to go and remove uh, some of these cannons, let's do that real quick just for, uh, for testing here. If we were to go and remove some of these cannons and hop back in, now when we hit T, it's only at 50% efficacy because we have half as many uh, cannons as we do salvaging units. Um, so optimally, you want the same amount of each. Um, let's, back, let's hop back into build mode here and put our cannons back. Uh, okay, so we're just going to put them like that just uh, for ease of use. Now, if we hold our salvage rays, then we can basically hold these continuously. Um, there's a slight break in the beam, um, but if we hit T, oh, you know what? It's back at 50%. Uh huh. So this is another good point. This brings up a good thing. So at 50%, there's a break in the beam. But if we go back into build mode, here's why. If we select our cannon computer again, 
Aha, uh -huh. those last cannons we added weren't linked up to the cannon computer. So let's remove them. And now we can put them back with our cannon computer selected. And now they're linked up. They've got the purple box out of them. So now if we go to fire our salvaging computer, we should have constant salvaging beams. Um, okay, so that is how the mining lasers work. Um, the next thing we want to touch on, let's look in inventory and see what we're looking at next. Um, thrusters. Thrusters are pretty much put thrusters until you feel like you're fast enough, uh, from what I can tell. I don't really uh, have a lot of information about them. Let's read the tooltip. Uh, the thruster module is capable of providing propulsion for ships of all shapes and sizes. Their main fuel source is power taken from the ship's power capacitors. So, yeah, put as many thrusters as you need to be fast enough. Um, it says it takes power from the ship's power capacitors, and we don't have any on the ship. So what happens if we add thrusters? Well, the ship's core has a built-in capacitor. Um, if we hit our spacebar and go back into build mode, you can see on the left we actually have 50,000 power. Um, and that comes out of the core. Um, if we add capacitors, I only have nine on me. Um, but if we add these capacitors, we can add, what, I've got three, we can add eight. Um, then that bumps our power up about, it's about, it's a little over a thousand per capacitor. Um, and the capacitors, they're kind of like the shields. Uh, no, wait, the capacitors, I think, work better if they're touching, right? So let's lay out our eight capacitors. We're at 58,500 total. So 58,500. Um, if we spread these out, let's just test it. We'll add our same eight. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, oh, I added an extra. So that's our eight, that puts us at exactly 58,000. So it's not a huge bonus by having them all touching, but they're only, eight capacitors here um, and we get an extra uh, half a thousand so that's about what every 10 capacitors gives you the energy of 12 something like that um, so that's useful information as well the capacitors you basically want a battery of them so lay them out in a block or a line or a row or something like that to get the most use out of those Well, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Uh, we're out of time for this episode, uh, but thank you very much for tuning in. This has been a really great episode for me. Uh, I definitely learned a lot um, while we were having our dialogue and, and, uh, and kind of playing with mechanics and, and learning um, about how the game works here. And if you like the video, make sure you leave a like. Um, they always help me out and uh, a comment if you want to, but no pressure. Um, as always, guys, thanks for tuning in.